Radiology of the shoulder joint and labrum. Here are the anatomical structures around the shoulder. And in this video, we're gonna talk about radiology of the glenohumeral joint and the labrum. What is the important radiology? The west point view will show you the Bankert lesion. The striker notch view will show you the Hillsax lesion. And then you got the MRI. So the west point of view will show you the Bankert lesion. The patient in prone position with a pillow supporting the affected shoulder and the arm abducted to 90 degree and the forearm hanging off the table. The beam is angled 25 degree medially and inferiorly with the head turned to the opposite side. The west point X-ray view allows visualization of the anterior inferior glenoid rim, and it may help in the diagnosis of Bankert lesion. This view is not routinely used. MRI is a better study. Now we go to the striker notch view that shows the health sex lesion. The patient is lying supine with the hand placed over the head. The beam is tilted 10 degrees cephalad and directed towards the coracoid. The striker notch view is used to diagnose health sex lesion of the head of the humerus. This view is not routinely used. MRI is a better study. How about the MRI? So here in the MRI, you will talk about normal axial plane, normal coronal plane, Bankert lesion, health sex lesion, and reverse Bankert lesion for posterior dislocation or instability. Normal anterior posterior labrum, axial plane. How do you see the labrum? This is a cross-section and an MRI of a normal anterior-posterior labrum in the axial plane. The labrum is triangular in shape, dark in T1 and dark in T2. The axial views of the MRI helps in the diagnosis of anterior and posterior labral tears and that will help in the diagnosis of anterior and posterior shoulder instability. How about the normal coronal plane? You can see the normal superior inferior labrum in the coronal plane. The labrum is triangular in shape and dark in T1 and T2. The presence of a slab tear is diagnosed in the coronal plane. Slab tear is a superior labrum tear. Now we're talking about the Bankert lesion. Bankert lesion usually occur in the anterior inferior labrum. It's usually seen in the axial view MRI, especially with a dye injected into the shoulder. The Bankert lesion can be fibrous or it can be bony. In the lower diagram and the MRI, you can see a large bony injury involving the anterior labrum. How about hill sex lesion? Hill sex lesion usually occurs with anterior dislocation of the shoulder. It is usually associated with a Bankert lesion. It occurs due to impaction of the humeral head against the anterior inferior glenoid. The Bankert lesion occurs in the anterior inferior glenoid. The head sex lesion occurs in the humeral head due to impaction of the humeral head against the anterior inferior glenoid. Exclusion of the lesion should be done following shoulder reduction. Check after reduction of the shoulder for the presence of this lesion. How about reverse Bankert lesion for posterior dislocation and subluxation? 
the reverse banker lesion of the glenoid or reverse hill sex fracture of the humeral head may accompany a posterior dislocation. Here you can see a reverse banker lesion and here you can see a reverse hill sex fracture. It is very important to note that the axillary radiographic view is important in diagnosing posterior shoulder dislocation. On the left, you can see a normal X-ray without dislocation. On the right, you can see an X-ray with posterior dislocation of the humeral head. How do you know the humeral head is going posteriorly? Look at the coracoid. The coracoid is anteriorly. Here is the glenoid, here is the humeral head, and here is the coracoid. The humeral head is seen impacted into the posterior rim of the glenoid, as you can see here. Posterior instability due to a lesion of the posterior labrum usually is diagnosed by the jerk or Kim test. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.